These are some zoom do's and don'ts that everyone must remember in your virtual sessions. Do choose a quiet spot where you can concentrate. Don't choose loud areas where you may distract other meeting attendees. Do sit up and stay close to the camera. Don't lay or sit on the floor. Do choose an appropriate location. Don't show up on your bed which shows that you are not interested to the topic being discussed. Do dress appropriately. Don't arrive in pajamas or comfy attires. Do be prepared and ready for the meeting. Don't arrive half awake or late. Do be quiet and polite. Don't eat during the meeting because other attendees may hear chewing sounds. These meeting reminders are brought to us by Pediatrica. Alagang may galing at puso. Hi everyone and welcome. Here are some Zoom meeting reminders that everyone must keep in mind. Here is a list of Zoom etiquette that everyone must remember while the session is ongoing. Log in to the meeting room in a distraction-free and quiet environment. Be sure to mute audio and turn the camera off upon entering the meeting room. Be on time. Arrive at least 5 minutes early to the meeting room. Be prepared with your computer or pen and paper for taking down important notes. These meeting reminders are brought to us by Pediatrica. Alagang may galing at puso. These are some Zoom do's and don'ts that everyone must remember in your virtual sessions. Do choose a quiet spot where you can concentrate. Don't choose loud areas where you may distract other meeting attendees. Do sit up and stay close to the camera. Don't lay or sit on the floor. Do choose an appropriate location. Don't show up on your bed which shows that you are not interested to the topic being discussed. Do dress appropriately. Don't arrive in pajamas or comfy attires. Do be prepared and ready for the meeting. Don't arrive half awake or late. Do be quiet and polite. Don't eat during the meeting because other attendees may hear chewing sounds. These meeting reminders are brought to us by Pediatrica. Alagang may galing at puso.
Good afternoon. Okay, so as we are reading the general guidelines, let's all settle down, please. As Pediatrica, our technical team will start the invocation, PPS team, and national anthem. Thank you. Bayang magiliw, pelas ng silanganan, alab ng puso, sa dibdib mo'y buhay. Lupang hinirang, duyan ka nang magiting, sa manlulupig, di ka pasisigil. Sa dagat at bundok, sa simoy at sa langit mong bugaw, may dilagang tula at awit sa paglayang minamahal. Ang kislap ng wataw at mo'y tagumpay na nagniningning Ang bituin na araw niya kailan pa may di magdidilim Lupa ng araw ng walhat ipagsinta Buhay ay langit sa piling mo Aming ligaya na pag may mga api Ang mamatay ng dahil sa'yo Pediatricians, we are gathered here and afar, called 
Thank you, Pediatrica. So good afternoon once again, uh, doctors and friends. I am, as always, your host, Linda Ko. And uh, thank you for attending this Wednesday conference entitled Glomerular Diseases from Nephrotic to Nephritic. Okay, so next, let's hear it from Dr. Sheldon Paragas, our PPS DSMC president. Good afternoon, Doc. Oh, good afternoon, Linda. Uh, good afternoon to everyone. Uh, welcome to another afternoon of learning. In behalf of the PPS Davao Southern Mindanao Chapter Board of Trustees, we are truly grateful to extend our thanks to the ever dynamic uh, Committee on Continuing Medical Education for giving us another topic we can all use in our everyday clinic. As the main objective of the uh, subspecialty lecture in the regular Wednesday conference is for us to review the very basic foundation in the understanding of the topic that will eventually guide us in the management of these cases. This afternoon, we are truly grateful also to have with us another speaker, a member of our chapter, which will be introduced later to give us topics on renal diseases. Dr. Linda, the virtual floor. Thank you, Podo. All right, let me introduce the moderator first. Next slide, please. Thank you very much. Uh, she is a fellow of the Philippine Society of Nephrology, Pediatric Nephrology Society of the Philippines, and Philippine Pediatric Society. She is also a member of the Philippine Medical Association and member of the Davao Doctors Hospital Medical Staff organization. She did her, um, let's see, she did her residency training, Department of Pediatrics, and postgraduate medical internship training at Davo Doctors Hospital, and subspecialty fellowship training at Section of Nephrology Department of Pediatrics at the University of the Philippines, PGH, or Philippine General Hospital, Manila. Um, before that, she had her medical degree at Davao Medical School Foundation and baccalaureate degree BS Industrial Pharmacy at the University of the Philippines, Manila. She has a lot of hospital affiliations, and these are Davao Doctors Hospital, Broken Shire, and Davao Medical School, uh, not yet, <laughs> Davao Medical School Foundation as Associate Active Staff. She is a visiting physician at Sa San Pedro Hospital and a medical specialist three at Southern Philippines Medical Center. Next slide, please. Thank you. And it is also important to note that she is the Associate Director for Doctors Engagement at Davao Doctors Hospital and Section Chair of the Section of Nephrology Department of Pediatrics at Southern Philippines Medical Center since July 2021. She was the president of the Philippine Pediatric Society, Davao Southern Medical Chapter, our chapter, from 2016 to 2018. She was vice president back in 2014 to 2016 and was a board member before that um, back in 2012 and 2014. So she really gave us her time um, be, uh, to be with us, no? be, being a, a member of the, an officer of uh, our chapter. Okay, so let us all welcome our very own energetic and very passionate doctor, physician and mentor, Dr. Maria Teresa Garcia Banez. Thank you, Podo, for accepting and uh, being our moderator today. Okay, next, our speaker is a diplomate of Philippine Society of Nephrology, Pediatric Nephrology Society of the Philippines, and Pediatric um, Philippine Pediatric Society's diplomate. Okay, he... Um, did his early school years at Ateneo de Davao University and Philippine Science High, Diliman. He did his college at BS Biology University of the Philippines, Diliman. He did his Doctor of Medicine at the University of the Philippines, Manila, and um, postgraduate internship. Now, he also did his residency training at the Department of Pediatrics at the University of the Philippines, PGH and uh, went to NKTI, or National Kidney and Transplant Institute, and was Chief Fellow of the Pediatric Nephrology Fellowship Training, and uh, went ahead to train in Korea, St. Mary's Hospital, in Interventional Nephrology Fellowship. Okay, 
Uh, next slide, please. All right. So some of his hospital affiliations include Southern Philippines Medical Center as Medical Specialist 2, um, Metro Davao Medical and Research Center, and Davao Doctors Hospital. Please let us all welcome our speaker for today, who loves his chlorides and ABGs, Dr. Ko de la Senya. Thank you, Doc, for being here with us. Hello, thank you for the introduction, Dr. Ines. Uh, can I share my slide? Yes, Paul. Floor is yours. And can you see it? Yes, Paul, Doc. Okay. Thank you. So, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, thank you for inviting me this afternoon to speak to you about uh, nephrotic and nephritic uh, syndrome. So, they, this is a fairly common uh, problem that is seen in the clinics and the emergency room. So I hope uh, I will enlighten some of us with regards to the disease, uh, diseases involved and to the current management uh, of these uh, problems. So I have no disclosures. So my objectives today are to define glomerulopathy and uh, discuss the different clinical syndromes seen in glomerular diseases. To present a few cases presenting with these different syndromes and to di uh, discuss diagnostic and therapeutic management updates uh, provided by uh, the pediatric nephrology community. So the first, let's uh, run through the cases. So the first case, uh, these are actually just made up cases, but uh, in reality, ito, ito naman talaga yung nakikita natin sa emergency room and clinics. So, the first case is a four-year-old female presenting with edema who had cough and colds five days prior. And then she also had, has abdominal pain uh, and uh, had no previous uh, history of infection. So just keep these cases in mind. Uh, the second case is a six-year-old male presenting with edema, headache, and then has dark red urine, decreased urine output with a BP of 130 over 80. He has a history of eczema three weeks ago, which spontaneously healed. The third case is an eight-year-old male uh, with sudden onset of symptoms presenting with rashes over his cheeks, slight uh, bipedal edema, no gross hematuria. The blood pressure is slightly elevated, 130 over 70, uh, and presented with a creatinine of 2.1 milligrams per deciliter. The fourth case is a 12-year-old male who on routine school screening uh, presented with uh, Hematuria on urinalysis, 13% dysmorphic. Blood pressure is normal. No edema noted, no skin lesions or previous throat infection. So actually, these four cases were present. I presented these four hypothetical cases in a previous lecture before. Uh, I hope you remember these cases, but we'll get into those cases uh, as we go along. So glomerulopathies or glomerular diseases, 10% uh, with any of these cases. Uh, these are diseases that are secondary uh, to an inherited defect or secondary to an injury to the glomeruli. The etiology is usually varied. It may be primary like congenital nephrotic syndrome, minimal change disease, or et cetera, or secondary secondary to diseases such as your diabetes mellitus, lupus, IgA nephropathy, and others. So this figure just shows a rough layout of the structures seen in the glomerulus. In each one of them, it can be prone to the injury. So for example, your IgA nephropathy can damage your mesangium. Your minimal change disease affects the epithelium, thus causing the effacement of your podocyte. Your lupus is known to cause damage in every part of the glomerulus. Some diseases are specific in the injury they cause, and others can be very expensive. 
And like I said earlier, various etiologies can cause damage to the glomerulus, whether genetic defects causing uh, structural abnormalities, such as split diaphragm changes. Immune-mediated diseases, such as IgA nephropathy, uh, can cause deposition of your immune complexes. Uh, uh, sorry, lupus, such, such as lupus, can cause a deposition of immune complexes in these uh, in the glomerulus. Direct drug injury or infectious process can give us these problems. So these are the different clinical syndromes of your glomerulopathy. So it can be any of one of any one of these. So it can be nephrotic syndrome where you have massive proteinuria, edema, hypoalbuminemia, and hyperlipidemia. You can have your nephritic syndrome, which has an abrupt on onset of uh, glomerular hematuria, non-nephrotic range, proteinuria, edema, hypertension, and transient renal impairment. The third clinical syndrome is your RPGN with features of acute nephritis, focal necrosis with or without presence, and a rapidly progressive renal failure over days to weeks. Uh, the fourth one is your chronic glomerulopathies. Uh, presenting with persistent proteinuria with or without hematuria and slowly progressive impairment of your renal function. And you have your asymptomatic hematuria or proteinuria or presenting with both. So the two main syndromes are seen as follows. You have nephrotic uh, spectrum and you have your uh, nephritic spectrum. So in the nephrotic spectrum, it presents either as a symptomatic mild proteinuria uh, to nephrotic range proteinuria of more than three grams per day. And the other end naman, you have your nephritic syndrome where you have uh, asymptomatic hematuria on one end or uh, on the other end, uh, you have your combination of hematuria, proteinuria, and acute kidney injury. In clinical practice, some may only have one syndrome. No? So some may only have uh, asymptomatic hematuria, while others have overt nephrotic syndrome. And in some diseases, you may have an overlap of both. <clears throat> so for example, ito is yung lupus. Some lupus patients may have just asymptomatic hematuria. Some lupus patients may have uh, overt nephrosis. So their presentation may depend on the extent of damage of the glomerulus and of the uh, and the chronicity of the disease. So let's briefly discuss what happens uh, with the clinical syndromes. So for example, in nephrotic syndrome. So the prototypical di the disease of nephrotic syndrome is your minimal change disease. For some patients, uh, there might be an identifiable trigger such as minor infections or insect bites or allergens. This will then cause foot process replacement, uh, which increases the permeability of the glomerular capillary wall, leading to protein leakage in the urine and causing massive proteinuria and hypoalbuminemia. So as a consequence, the intravascular oncotic pressure decreases, causing uh, the fluid to move to the interstitium, causing uh, edema formation. With protein loss in the urine, there is concomitant hepatic uh, lipoprotein synthesis uh, and uh, decreased catabolism of lipids. And, uh, you know, so all of these symptoms uh, will give you the characteristic findings in nephrotic syndrome. So with uh, the patients with nephrotic syndrome will eventually present with different complications if not treated early. Uh, most of these complications are associated with the leakage of pro proteins, predisposing the patients to the development of hypovolemia or increased risk for acquiring infections and hypercoagulable states. So in general, for suspected cases of nephrotic syndrome, uh, you might want to request for these labs to help you with the diagnosis. So then request for your urinalysis, 
albumin, cholesterol, etc. Uh, the kidney biopsy, uh, more often than not, can be delayed for the usual cases of nephrotic syndrome as most cases are secondary to minimal change disease. Other labs that you can request are your CBC, C3, electrolytes, and ultrasound. Now, the International uh, Pediatric Nephrology Association and your TBGO gave us recommendations to help us with the management of these uh, uh, kidney diseases. No? So these are fun. These are formulated by uh, a group of expert pediatric nephrologists, pathologists, and geneticists. You know? So uh, this can streamline most of our work up and treatment. So the criteria for nephrotic syndrome is as follows. You know? So one should have nephrotic range proteinuria with a, va with a quantitative amount of more than 40 milligrams per meter squared per hour or uh, more than 2 uh, grams per gram urine protein creatinine ratio plus either hypoalbuminemia of albumin less than 30 grams per liter or albumin with uh, serum albumin of uh, uh, or edema if serum albumin is not available. So the general guide is that for nephrotic patients, one should institute fluid and volume uh, and electrolyte management. No? So you can give your diuretics. For some cases, you can give your albumin, uh, especially those with uh, showing hypotension. And some may need uh, ref uh, restriction of uh, your fluid, but almost all would uh, require uh, sodium restriction. And then you have to address uh, complications such as your hypertension, infection, and other complications. So the treatment as uh, advised or as shown by the guidelines uh, given by your KBGO and IPNA uh, is to start your glucocorticosteroids once the diagnosis is made. The most common cause of nephrotic syndrome is minimal change disease and almost all of uh, almost 90% of these are responsive to steroids. So you can use either prednisolone or prednisone for, for a daily dose of 46 uh, with, uh, duration of 46 weeks and gradual uh, and taper down to an alternate dosing for another 46 weeks and then you can discontinue now relapses are quite common even with steroid responders no? so if there are less than four relapses in a year or has one in six months the patient is an infrequent relapser these patients are just treated again with glucocorticosteroids. For frequent relapsers, which is defined as having two or more relapses in a six-month period or more than four in a year, uh, the, the patient is uh, given uh, additional immunosuppressive medications. For patients with steroid dependence, defined as recurrence of symptoms with lower doses of steroids or recurrence of symptoms uh, within two weeks of discontinuation of the steroids, this, these cases are also treated with uh, additional immunosuppressive medications. For those who are at risk for developing relapse, such as those with frequent relapser and steroid-dependent nephrotic syndrome, uh, it is recommended that one should use low-dose prednisone at 0.5 milligrams per kilogram for at least a week during that episode of infection. After four weeks of initial treatment, if your patient does not show complete response with glucocorticosteroids, one must consider either partial remission or the patient is a relate responder or a case of steroid-resistant nephrotic syndrome. Some patients may need additional treatment options as such as your ACE inhibitors or angiotensin receptor blockers, 
uh, or in, more intense therapy with IV met- methylprednisolone. So they can respond. So the yung pan- labels kanila, they are late responders. And they could go into full remission. Uh, it is recommended, however, that within the four to six week period, uh, you consider that your patient may be steroid resistant and you have to follow uh, certain steps. So during the four to six peri- uh, four to six week period, it is recommended that you do a first morning UPCR or urine protein creatine ratio, or a twenty four hour urine protein collection sample, be done as a baseline before defining your patient as having steroid resistance. And also, this is, these laboratories are also recommended before starting your alternative immunosuppressive medications. Uh, it is also during this time, the four to six week period, that your patient be worked up for other etiologies that may cause steroid resistance. So ito yung uh, checklist for your uh, further workup for steroid resistant nephrotic syndrome. So it is recommended to do genetic testing for primary SRNS and those with extra renal features or syndromic cases no? and do renal biopsy for all cases of SRNS except in those conditions with infection or malignancy. And it uh, dapat uh, nagawa within the four to six week period. Kasabay nun, dapat ginagawa din ang uh, genetic testing if it's available in the lo- uh, in our locality. So once SRNS diagnosis is made, it is recommended that the patient be started on uh, RAS blockade. So you can use either your ACE inhibitors or your angiotensin receptor blockers. And uh, this should be used in co- uh, with caution in patients with CKD4 so they can uh, aggravate the condition. So during the confirmation period of four to six weeks, one may opt to continue the oral glucocorticosteroids, uh, whether daily or every other day dosing, or uh, opt to use your IV methylprednisolone, giving that chance for late responders. Now, after six weeks, kung wala pa rin improvement, talagang SRNS na yung patient mo, it is recommended that calcineurin inhibitors be used as the first-line treatment for SRNS. It has been shown in studies that calcineurin inhibitors offer the best treatment for steroid-resistant nephrotic syndrome. Okay, so it can either you you can use either your tacrolimus or cyclosporine. So mas well studied ang cyclosporine, but uh, uh, tacrolimus has been shown to be the better drug between the two. No? The problem is medyo expensive lang yung dalawa. Okay, so these are the starting doses. Uh, when once you started the treatment, for example, with C- CYA, uh, it is advisable to do your trough level. Unfortunately, ang measuring of the trough level is not available locally. We can request it in SPMC, but the sample is still will still be sent to. Uh, NKTI. I'm not sure when will the trough levels be available in SPMC, but they are working on it, especially for our transplant patients. So same thing with tacrolimus. No? So sometimes both CYA and tacrolimus can induce acute tubular necrosis, which uh, more often that, than not is dose-dependent. So if you started on a 5 milligram per kilogram per day for cyclosporine, uh, and you notice that uh, your urine urinalysis shows urinary sediments, 
your creatinine is gradually increasing, that may be a sign for you to lower the dose. Now, for patients with low GFR, less than 13 mils per minute per 1.7 millimeters squared, it is suggested that mycophenolate or mycophenolic acid analogs be used instead of calcineurin inhibitors. Uh, this offers the second uh, better, all, I mean, the second best option for treatment of SRNS. If ever, uh, CNIs or mycophenolate is not available or unaffordable, one may use cyclophosphamide. However, KBGO has not recommended the use of cyclophosphamide for SRNS. Ginagamit na lang natin to when pushed against the wall. So, kasi wala nang ibang choice. Uh, talagang mahal ang cyclo, uh, cyclosporine, tacrolimus, and your mycophenolate. The cheapest mycophenolate is about 65 pesos per tablet. And imagine using about 1 to 2 grams per patient. So that would be almost uh, 120 to 200 pesos per day. So uh, imagine if you're earning on uh, low salaries. Now, for steroid-resistant and calcineurin inhibitor-resistant nephrotic syndrome, you may try available immune suppression, such as your mycophenolate, cyclophosphamide, acetylcholine. Uh, but be prepared uh, that your patient might not respond uh, the same way. Uh, as, uh, I mean, might not respond as you hope. Uh, you might. Uh, opt to enroll your patient to available clinical trials. So if one is being done in your center, uh, one, you, you can opt to enroll them. You may try uh, other treatment options such as the use of rituximab. However, medyo mahal din itong treatment option na to, about 100,000 per vial. And you might need several doses of this. And then an up-and-coming drug such, uh, known as your Ofatumumab. Uh, this is not yet available in our country, no? but it has been shown to uh, be better than rituximab in test subjects. So genetic nephrotic syndrome, uh, like the one we discussed, uh, I think, two weeks ago, tama ba? Uh, it may be syndromic or non-syndromic. Various etiologies uh, can be because of mutations of uh, your NPHS1, NPHS2, Wills tumor gene, your LAMB2 gene. No? So uh, these cases are usually, uh, are more often than not, non-responsive to your steroids and other immunosuppressive uh, medication. So the treatment is supportive. And you can give your albumin infusions, your RAS blockade, uh, judicious use of your anticoagulation. And for some patients, to prepare them for transplant, you do your nephrectomy and renal replacement therapy. Now, going to the next syndrome, your acute nephritis. Um, the antecedent event may vary, you know? But the pathology may either be from immune-mediated mechanisms or direct or in indirect uh, factors. So let, let's take the example of the prototypical uh, nephritic syndrome, which is your acute post-infectious GN. It starts off with an antecedent infection, which could be viral, bacterial, or parasitic. Uh, yung pinaka-common talaga is your post-trep. So it's caused by your group A beta hemolytic strep. Symptoms would uh, appear after three to five weeks if it's a skin infection, one to two weeks if it's a respiratory infection or pharyngitis. Uh, these strains would form your immune complexes, uh, which is then deposited at your glomerular based membrane, causing your immunologic injury to the glomerulus leading to your hematuria. 
Uh, glomerular hematuria is described as your dark or cola colored urine. Uh, the renal injury then causes a decrease in your glomerular uh, filtration rate, causing the patient to have decreased urine output or oliguria. The decrease in the GFR would then lead to uh, fluid retention, and the patient would develop edema, hypertension, and pulmonary congestion. So the nephritic syndrome uh, is fairly common in the emergency room. Uh, madalas ito yung kinatatakutan ng mga patient, uh, patients na namumula yung ihit nila. Okay. So other patients may present with complications. No? Minsan kasi wala masyado. So hypertension, edema, and p color urine. But you have to be aware that uh, nephritic syndrome comes with acute kidney injury. So this will give you uh, problems such as your electrolyte imbalance, uh, giving you your hyperkalemia and metabolic acidosis. And some of these patients may need uh, dialysis if not treated uh, promptly. So what do you need to confirm the diagnosis? So you can order your urinalysis, creatinine, electrolytes, C3, ASO, uh, other laboratories if needed, CBC, ultrasound, ANA, anti-GSTMA, HEPA profile, and you can also request for your 24-hour protein collection or your UPCR. The kidney biopsy remains the gold standard of these diseases. So as much as possible, if you're presenting with uh, acute nephritis and your and your patient is not likely uh, acute PSGN, it's better to request for your kidney biopsy. So similar to nephrotic syndrome, basically almost similar lang eh. Uh, sodium and fluid restriction, diuretics, address your hypertension if present. And then you can give uh, ACE inhibitors for your patients with proteinuria, especially kung uh, naglalaro na malapit sa nephrotic range. But we have to emphasize that treatment is actually disease-specific. In some cases, you might need immune suppression, uh, especially if uh, the disease is severe. In some cases, uh, you don't need to give your immunosuppression. You would just need your antibiotics or antivirals. So, kailangan talaga yung biopsy to determine what, uh, what treatment plan you are going to give to your patient. So, for PSGN, usually, uh, it's caused by your group A, but other bacterial infections, such as your SRUs, infective endocarditis, pneumonia, shunt infections, and viral etiologies such as your CMV, infectious mono, and fungal infections can cause uh, infection-related GN. So yung tamang term na ngayon na ginagamit is infection-related GN. Uh, pero let's just stick to PSGN kasi yun naman ang pinaka-common. Uh, usually, makikita nyo talaga naman as your patient uh, serum laboratories uh, would show hypocomplementemia, but with normalize after six to eight weeks. No? If you have the benefit of your uh, kidney biopsy, it would show subepithelial humps on uh, because of the deposition of your complement there. Treatment is usually uh, supportive. You have to give your antibiotics to treat the uh, to eradicate nephroto, nephritogenic strains of that infection. Prognosis is usually good with early diagnosis and treatment. Now, a close differential for PS, PSGN is your IgA nephropathy. So, ito yung may hematuria ka pero pa ulit ulit. So. Ang difference ito is that the etiology is different. You have IgA deposits uh, causing damage to your mesangium. Okay. So it is diagnosed with immunofluorescence 
IgA deposits in the mesangium, and it shows normal levels of your C3. There is still no specific treatment of IgA in the property, even though this is the most common glomerular disease worldwide. Based on the guidelines, they just advise maximize, to maximize your supportive care. You can give your RAS blockade, especially if your patient presents with proteinuria. Make sure you have adequate blood pressure control as hypertension seems to uh, cause more injury to these patients. No? So, mas napapabilis yung progression nila to CKP. You have to emphasize lifestyle modifications kasi nga, uh, you don't want to add more injury to the, uh, to the kidney. So if your patients present with proteinuria of more than 0.75 grams per day, despite supportive therapy, you may try your gluco ther uh, glucocorticoid therapy. You know? uh, it is used in, uh, with caution for those with EGFR, less than 30 uh, mils per minute, those with infections, those with secondary disease, and uh, those with severe osteoporosis. Basically, itong mga guidelines na to for IgA is derived from the adult, but uh, may be applicable for pediatric patients. Additional immunosuppressive agents have not been recommended for most patients uh, kasi nga halos wala silang nakikitang uh, improvement with the uh, ano, with the therapy. But for some cases, it might provide some, uh, uh, it might help with the, with the disease. For example, if your patient has a rapidly progressive course with deteriorating renal function, there might be some benefit in giving your cyclophosphamide. In Asians, more, more specifically Chinese, Studies have shown that mycophenolate can improve renal function and proteinuria. For Japanese, uh, they have been advocating for a long time the use of tonsillectomy, but the benefits have not been shown in other studies outside of Japan. So, uh, iba iba kasi yung ano, ang results of the different studies per area. So, hindi talaga sila makapagbigay ng general recommendation for the for IgA in a property. Now, uh, experts have recommended that for some patients presenting with nephrotic syndrome, uh, the guidelines for the associated biopsy findings be followed. So, kunwari, ang nakita nila on biopsy is minimal change disease. Ang guidelines na susunda natin is the guidelines for minimal change disease. Pero this has not been uh, thoroughly studied. So, expert opinion pa lang to. Okay. So, our third case, uh, this one here, presented with sudden appearance of symptoms and rapidly decreasing renal function. So, for these patients, we have to distinguish whether the symptoms are because of a rapidly progressive glomerulonephritis or a non-glomerular etiology such as obstructive lesions or tubular interstitial nephritis. But we'll focus more on RPGN. Okay. So with RPGN, uh, you have to work up your patient for possibly uh, underlying etiologies. No? Yung mga, uh, for example, lupus, ANCA-associated diseases, etc. So RPGN is a rare syndrome, but because of its fast deterioration, it has a high rate of renal failure and morbidity. So on biopsy, makikita ninyo yan, there is presence of your crescent, crescents in the glomeruli. So ano yung crescents? So if you look closely in the biopsy here, the crescents are those. Yung area na kung saan parang hindi na siya normal looking glomerulus. Ayan. Okay. So these are cellular responses seen outside of the glomerular tuff uh, between your Bowman's capsule. Kaya 
Kaya siya tinatawag na crescentic GN is because of the presence of your crescents. There are three types. The first type is your anti-GBM disease, such as your good pasture. The second type, which is immune complex mediated, such as your PIGN, your SLE. And your third type, which is your posi-immune posi type, usually anti-associated diseases, such as your uh, granulomatosis with polyangiitis, formerly known as your Wegeners, uh, and your uh, microscopic polyangiitis. So the management for these diseases are usually specific uh, and started once your biopsy results are in or your definitive diagnosis are in. Uh, but before that, kasi medyo matagal ang results ng biopsy mo, you have to give your empiric treatment of methylprednisolone IV pulse therapy. It's to control the rapid loss of your renal function. So once you've given that and your biopsy results are in, you can proceed with your specific therapy. Now, some cases would require plasmapharesis. Uh, for example, in your anti-GBM disease and your posi-immune GN, uh, it's to, uh, to alleviate no, the condition for vital organ and life-threatening conditions. In some patients, IVIG might be helpful. Now, for this third case, we did the biopsy, for example, and it showed SLE plus 3 with cellular crescent. So the patient was started on immune suppression, glucocorticosteroids, uh, IV methylprednisolone, and started on uh, your ACE inhibitors. Now, SLE, I still use the soap brain MD as a quick reference. Kasi madali is the soap brain MD. All you have to remember is that pneumonic. And if you fulfill that mnemonic, four out of 11 criteria, you, ha you have a high suspicion for SLE. But now there's an update. Baka pagalidan ako nila Dr. Linda and Dr. Tess. Uh, may update na, may 2019 ULAR classification, ULAR ACR classification. So uh, the initial criterion or the entry point is your ANA, that if the result is more than or equal to 1 is to 80. It has a sensitivity of 98% with a lower limit of 95% confidence interval at 97%. So medyo mataas. So lupus nephritis uh, is diagnosed. Uh, ah, sorry. Uh, wait lang. Uh, so if yung criteria mo fulfills uh, specific scores, no? and the score is a total of 10 or more, it is highly likely that your patient is lupus. Now, lupus nephritis occurs in about uh, 50 to 60 percent of patients, but the data might be higher in subclinical disease. So, kasi hindi at na biopsy, it will be a great help uh, if for the management if we have kidney biopsy done for all cases of SLD. Now, for lupus nephritis, there are six classes. Yeah. Class 1 and class 2 are usually mild. And uh, yung makikita mo doon are minimal mesangial lesions. Class 3 and class 4 are, the, are classified as proliferative lesions. Class 5 is membranous lupus nephritis. And class 6, hindi na pinakita dyan sa slide na yan. Uh, kasi halos wala ka na makita. Class 6 is uh, advanced disease with sclerotic nephritis. So, class 6 yung mga prepare mo na for possible dialysis. Okay. So, the management of lupus is constantly changing and may likely change over the next few months as more studies, more uh, approved uh, therapeutic options will be, uh, will be released soon. Uh, given the state of uh, SLE and the potential adverse effects of therapies that we are giving to the patient, the work group uh, proposed a holistic approach no, for the treatment of patients with LN. So uh, they gave several relevant suggestions to improve the health and well-being of these patients. 
like uh, the treatment for CKD, ina advice na nila yung diet and lifestyle modification. And to give constant assessment for infections and malignancy, especially those on cyclophosphamide. And to do counseling for women of childbearing age uh, should be given. So it is also advised that anti-malarials be given if there are no contraindications. Uh, these reduce the occurrence of your flares, decrease the organ damage, and it actually enhances the responsiveness to immunosuppressive therapy. Now, for class 1 and class 2, the management would depend on the presence of proteinuria and extrarenal manifestations. So if your patient presents with nephrotic syndrome and biopsy reveals podocytopathy, immunosuppressive therapy with glucocorticosteroids and an additional agent may be started. Now, for class 3 and class 4, there has been a general observation among experts that these patients may not need very intense immunosuppressive therapy. That is say we were aggressive with cyclophosphamide at a very high dose. Now, uh, they are advocating lower doses. No? So, ngayon, uh, it has been also advocated that you can have uh, an option between your mycophenolate and cyclos uh, cyclophosphamide as an initial treatment. The dose of your steroids is lower. Uh, your methylprednisolone is between 0.25 to 0.5 grams per day. Your prednisone, uh, after the, the pulse therapy, is set at 0.6 to 1 milligram per kilogram per day. Now, the use of cyclophosphamide uh, before it was advocated at one, one gram per day, one gram per meter squared per day. And now, uh, they advocated the use of the urolupus regimen, which is a lower dose of about 500 milligrams for every two weeks. So a total of six doses uh, is given. But for some patients, depending on the clinical call of the physician, especially for those with very severe proliferative lupus nephritis, those with abundant presence on biopsy, uh, those with glomerular capillary necrosis or rapid deterioration of renal function, we can still opt to use the more intense immunosuppressive uh, uh, cyclophosphamide. But we do have to watch out for uh, those effects. For class 5, it's similar to one in class 1 and class 2. The management is dependent on the level of proteinuria using immunosuppression for those with nephrotic range proteinuria. Okay. So class 4, uh, which uh, I said earlier, actually presents with asymptomatic Hematuriano. So this patient eventually underwent in, uh, kidney biopsy, which showed thin uh, basement membrane disease. Uh, thin basement membrane disease is a benign condition, uh, only presenting with microscopic hematuria. Renal function is good all throughout uh, the patient's life. Uh, condition is thought to be a problem with your type 4 collagen. So management is supportive. So you can advise diet modification if you're still wary of the hematuria. Uh, regular exercise to update immunosuppression, uh, Im to update immuno immunizations. Uh, some of these cases might have uh, increased hematuria with, uh, know, with upper respiratory tract infections. And to regularly monitor the symptoms. No, but why do I? Why do we have to monitor if these patients are benign? If the condition is benign, why do we still have to monitor? <clears throat> the three most common causes of microscopic hematuria are your thin basement membrane disease, your IgA nephropathy, and Alport syndrome. 
PBMD is actually closely related to Alport syndrome because of the similarities in the involvement of your type 4 collagen. So, uh, minsan kasi, the preliminary or the initial presenting symptom of Alport syndrome is uh, microscopic hematuria. On biopsy, it may show thin basement membrane, but later on, the patient may present with the clinical signs of Alport syndrome. So these patients, <clears throat> uh, patients with Alport syndrome usually present with your uh, hearing problems and eye problems. So, so usually they have sensory neural deafness and anterior lenticonus, which is pathognomonic for Alport syndrome. So magkakaroon sila ng vision problems. Now, the pathophysiology of Alport syndrome is impaired <clears throat> production and deposition of your collagen for uh, network in the basement membrane of the glomerulus, also seen in your cochlea and the eye. In 80% of these cases, Alport syndrome is inherited uh, in an X-linked pattern. Uh, about 50% of X-linked disease form, about 50% of the males will have ESRD by the age of 30 and may require dialysis. Uh, biopsy may reveal focal and segmental glomerulosclerosis, uh, tubular atrophy, and interstitial fibrosis. Electron microscopy of the kidney will show longitudinal splitting of your GBM. Uh, treatment is mostly supportive, so you can refer to your opta for your uh, eye problems. So usually they do phaco emulsification and intraocular uh, lens uh, replacement. And uh, referring to your ENT for uh, hearing aid application. Now, with regards to the kidney, uh, they have deterioration of your renal function. So to prolong its effects, you can give your RAS blockade. But eventually, these patients might need renal replacement therapy and kidney transplantation. Now, the good news is for patients who underwent kidney transplantation, they have good outcomes because... Uh, there is no recurrence of the primary disease uh, in these patients. So, hindi na umuulit kasi normal na yung glomerular basement membrane. So, in summary, uh, the presentation of glomerular disease depends on the etiology, affected structures, and the severity. Rapidly progressive disease is an emergency it, and might need uh, Ano, IV methylprednisolone to counteract the effects. Biopsy is really needed for most of these patients. Treatment for most is disease specific, but all patients will benefit with good fluid and electrolyte balance and hypertension control. Always be updated. Most glomerular diseases have no ideal therapy yet. Guidelines are ever changing as more data is gathered. And hopefully, we recognize them early. So, thank you very much for listening. So, any questions? Thank you for that, Ku. Uh, that was a very... Um extensive no, discussion on nephrotic and nephritic syndromes and the other glomerulopathies. Um, before we start on the questions, uh, FYI lang, no, cyclosporine is actually available at Davo Doctors. The results can be made available to you within 10 to 14 days. No? So, uh, but, but it is still sent to NKTI, but Davo Doctors can do it for you uh, it is priced around 5000 more or less. No? And then uh, for the students, because we have students here, do not forget that we still observe no, the indications for kidney biopsy. 
Baka kasi you go to nephro and then you do biopsy left and right. No, we still we do not do that. No, we still observe the indications. And then, yes, I agree with Dr. Ku with regards to the ULAR criteria for diagnosing um, SLE. But first, before you say your patient is SLE, you can still go through the... Um, criteria yung other systems no the four out of 12 systems no you can still do that and then if they do not fall or they are not they do not belong to the classic or the textbook type of lupus then you may use the ULAR criteria so go um i only have two questions sent to me directly the first question actually is uh, can nephrotic syndrome coexist with an acute nephritic syndrome? Uh, with regards to that, yes. No, uh, it actually depends on the disease. Uh, what what damage the disease uh, caused, and uh, what were the involved structures? No? So, for example, lupus can have your nephrotic range proteinuria. Uh, high polyvinemia and uh, massive uh, and massive edema, and then you can also have the nephritic features such as your acute kidney injury, hematuria, hypertension. So, pweding pwede talaga na magsama, mag overlap yung yung symptoms. Uh, for example, nga with regards to rapidly progressive glomerulonephritis, RPJN was previously uh, coined as nephrotic nephritic syndrome. Diba, Ma'am Tess? The PGH before, yes, we yes. used to you call that nephrotic nephritic syndrome. So uh, these are the patients who do present with a combination of nephrotic and nephritic. Pero basically, uh, we don't label nephrotic nephritic uh, anymore. We actually focus on what the disease is. But for nephrotic syndrome kasi, uh, pinaka-common talaga dyan is minimal change disease. Kaya nephrotic syndrome, tinatanggap na lang minsan yung terminology. Eh. Kasi nga, 80, uh, 80 to 90% are minimal change disease. Pero with nephritic, we'd, we'd rather have a biopsy if it's available and then call the disease as such. Yes, okay. Um, and then the next question, uh, when you are presented with a patient with an acute nephritic nephrotic condition, what are the important things to do or how do we manage these patients? Uh, okay, so for example, if it's an RPGN. So uh, with regards to RPGN, uh, we have to yun nga, differentiate between a glomerular and a non-glomerular cause. Kasi pwede din kasi parang RPGN yung mga obstructive uropathy. Uh, so darating yung mga pasyente nga na hindi na umihi, manas, mataas ang creatin. Pero yun lang pala, may bato lang pala sa sa, ano, sa, sa, ano, sa outflow ng, ng urinary tract. So we have to differentiate both. Now, if you're sure that your patient is not uh, ano, non-glomerular and you're really thinking of an RPG and uh, we have to do all labs that can uh, actually answer the clinical history of our patient. So we have to look at the history to say whether it uh, ano siya, posibleng uh, posi-immune ba siya, posibleng anti-GBM ba siya, posibleng immune-mediated ba siya. Yung mga posi-immune and anti-GBM, Bihira pa ako nakakita. Actually, parang textbook pa lang. Ikaw ba, Ma'am Tess, nakakita ka na ng, ng posi-immune? <laughs> Bihira. More, more often than not, you will see those conditions in the adult population. So, uh, if it's RPGN, most likely in the pediatric age, we might be dealing with an immune complex mediated disease. So, doon magpo-focus yung mga laboratories natin. So, you have to rule out a uh, possibility of post-infectious, you have to rule out SLE, you have to rule out uh, IgA nephropathy, etc. So all your laboratories are directed towards the finding of your etiology. 
Now, with regards to biopsy, uh, actually, uh, as much as possible, gusto mo kaagad-agad magagawa. But these patients come in medyo toxic. So we have to stabilize them first. No? So you have to make sure that there is fluid uh, electrolyte uh, management. No? So you have to make sure the patient is not congested, uh, electrolytes are okay, you give your diuretics, you, you withhold fluids if the patient is in fluid overload, etc. Now, the treatment, as said earlier, for emergency cases so, such as your RPGN, is by giving your IV methylprednisolone. So you have to control the rapidly deteriorating renal function. No? In some cases, kung hindi mo talaga makontrol ang fluid balance mo, progressive yung, yung symptoms, you might need to stabilize your patient by giving or doing your re renal replacement therapy, especially for oligoanuric patients, acidotic, ah, acidemic patients, those with hyperkalemia. Tapos, somewhere along the line, kapag na-stabilize mo na siya, and then uh, stable enough to do your kidney biopsy, you can proceed with your kidney biopsy. And then once you get your results, you can start the appropriate treatment na. So, yun nga, parang dati sa PGH, nagmamadali tayong lahat kapag mukhang RPGN kasi one, eh, you, you don't want to lose that renal function. So in short, uh, when you are uh, confronted with an acute nephritic nephrotic syndrome, uh, first things first, no? Para, parang resuscitation, ABCs, no? So you do, uh, you manage first the most life-threatening presentation of your patient, no? You, that is always the first in line, okay? So um, another question is... Um, in patients with post-trep GN, kasi this is very classic, no? Uh, can be seen, we, we read this one in Nelson's, no? So this is very common for general pediatrics. For patients with post-trep GN who underwent biopsy, how many of them turned out not to be PSGN? And may we know what glomerulopathies they are? Actually, I don't know the answer to that question. Pero kasi with, PSG, with PIGN or PSGN, uh, usually you do see the sub-epithelial humps. No? Uh, and then, ang makikita sa biopsy, sa light microscopy is just uh, infiltration of your ano, uh, immune mediators such as your white blood cells. Uh, there is proliferation. Your immunofluorescence would show deposition of your uh, sub uh, in your epithelial layer of your IgM and IgG and C3. Uh, but I'm not sure what is the percentage of those na negative, yung mga ganong findings sa isang patient suspected with PIGN. So maybe, di parang hindi ko rin nabasa yan sa textbook. So I'm not really sure about the answer to that. Actually, post-rep GN may not turn to be po turn out to be post-rep GN upon biopsy, no? Because post-rep GN they can be overlapping with other renal conditions, so they can present with other glomerulopathies. Uh, true, uh, we do not do biopsy for patients with post-rep GN, and. Um, uh, however, we do recommend biopsy for patients presenting with a rapidly progressive GN secondary to a post-trep GN. So that is very important for you to know what is the underlying disease condition. Because post-trep GN can, be, can present as a very mild condition or even a very severe condition. So we do not do... Uh, biopsy for post-trep GN, but we do biopsy, we recommend biopsy for RPGN secondary to, to post-trep GN. 
Okay, do we still have other questions or anybody can uh, turn on their microphones and ask, ah, meron pa. Can we manage acute post rep GN as OPD or do we need to admit all of them? It depends on the clinical one, clinical uh, presentation of the patient. So usually, uh, we admit patients if they are hypertensive and symptomatic. Uh, we admit patients if the oliguria uh, is persistent or matagal na siyang konti yung ihe. There are signs and symptoms of fluid overload affecting the lungs meron ka ng congestion. And if you are not sure with the renal uh, function, so for example, hindi mo alam ang creatinine values, uh, you can opt to admit your patients. And for those who already with creatinine levels, if you are not sure, uh, tumari mataas siya, and if you're not sure kung kailan siya bababa or pakiat pa yan, uh, the the safe option is to admit your patient. But you can opt not to admit your patient if uh, your patient is otherwise okay, walang episodes of hypertension, fluid overload, uh, wala siyang congestion, uh, medyo marami naman ng ihe as quantified by the, the guardian, and then uh, kung meron kang evidence of your renal function na okay siya. And if you opt to send your patient home uh, for outpatient follow-up, dapat close monitoring sila. And then have them follow up to you uh, one the earliest possible time na convenience sa kanila to check up on them. No? And then for follow-up of these patients, dapat uh, kasama ang follow-up ng C3 after two months just to check that your patient follows the usual progression of your PSG. Okay. Um, do we still have other questions? Um, so, I think Dr. Ku has answered naman all the questions. Uh, so... I think I have to turn back the, to give back to Linda the stage. No, I think we are done with the question and answer. Unless somebody wants to turn on their mic and speak freely, <laughs> you may you can always do that. Okay, so if there are no more questions, Dr. Ku, thank you for a very extensive lecture on glomerulopathies. So, Lynn, back to you. Thank you. Thank you, po, Dr. Banyas. Also, thank you, Dr. Dalasanya. If you can keep your videos open po for the awarding of certificates and um, let me call on Dr. Vic Legamia, our PPS, the SMCC ME chair. Okay, thank you very much, Dr. Linda. Yes. Good evening, everyone. That was a very and extensive lecture, Dr. Very much. Indeed, we learned a lot from yes. your lecture. And we'd like also to thank Dr. Banyas for um, for successfully uh, facilitating this activity, this the Q and A, pala. And we appreciate um, Dr. Banyas' presence for always, ano, being there for us. Kung magkailangan namin siya. <laughs> anyway, um, let's proceed with the awarding of certificates. The Philippine Pediatric Society, Davos Southern Mindanao Chapter, awards the Certificate of Appreciation to Dr. Cody Lasenia in grateful recognition for being our resource speaker in the lecture entitled Glomerular Diseases from Nephrotic to Nephritic, given this 23rd day of March 2022, signed by Dr. Sheldon P. Paragas, Chapter President, and yours truly, CPD Chair. Thank you very much for, for always um, accepting our invitation to be our resource speaker. And the same certificate to the same signatories is given to Dr. Maria Teresa R. Garcia Banyas in grateful recognition for being our moderator. Thank you very much, Dr. Tess, as always. So for the upcoming events, 
on March 30, we have um, a scientific lecture, Pneumococcal Conjugate Vaccine Impact by Dr. Jonathan G. Lim. And on April 15, we have BLS PALS at the fourth floor of Double Doctors Hospital Oncology Center. April 6, actually, we have a lecture on embracing skill as a gift by Dr. by Bishop Bandit. Actually, this is um, in continuation with the Child Advocacy Program. So it's Wednesday, April 6, and April 8, it's Friday, we have the PPSDSMC Mini Congress and General Assembly 2022. So kasama na dito yung election of officers. We will be sending um, emails as an uh, invitation through emails. And on April 20, we have an intra-hospital case presentation by the DMSF Hospital and another scientific lecture on April 27. And again, on May 3 to 6, we have the, the PPS annual convention. So we hope to see you in our coming events. And please don't forget to answer the post test questions. Actually, um, for this, uh, for the, the post test, you will receive the certificate after two to three days. Pa. For this, ano lang, for this post test. So please don't forget to answer that. Okay. Um, thank you very much. Back to you, Dr. Linda. Good evening. Thank you. Thank you, Doc B. Um, just in case you missed it, our April 8th, save the date, please, for April 8th for our General Assembly. All right. So now to end our um, event, let us call on Dr. Cleo Felianos, our PPSDSMC Vice President. Thank you, Dr. Linda. Pediatrics is always a continuous learning process. And this afternoon, we just heard another subspecialty lecturer close to our hearts that is nephrology. So in behalf of the officers and the board of directors of the Philippine Pediatric Society, Davao Southern Mindanao Chapter, I would like to thank and congratulate our expert speaker, Dr. Ko De La Senia, for your very interesting and very comprehensive lecture on glomerular diseases from nephrotic to nephritic. Your expertise is truly appreciated and I'm sure everyone will agree with me that we truly learned a lot tonight. And I would like to thank also all our attendees in tonight's forum from all over the Philippines, the consultants, the residents, the interns, and the clerks who are present virtually tonight. Thank you for your active participation. Thank you, Dr. Tess Banyes, for doing an excellent job in being our moderator. And as always, Dr. Linda, thank you for being our host. And before I turn over the floor to our MC, let me thank our industry partner, Pediatrica, for sponsoring tonight's activity. So stay safe, everyone, and have a nice day. Back to you, Dr. Linda. Thank you, Pado. All right, so what's next? Ah. So if we can, I'll turn on our videos for the photo shoot. Pediatrica will be the one to cue us. Okay, doctors, hold your um, cameras lang for 15 seconds. Thank you. Thank you so much doctors and good evening don't forget to answer your post test for tonight and stay tuned for our pediatric game time all right well uh, i think post test link will be up shortly and thank you everyone for attending i will give the floor now to our partner in this event pediatrica thank you Mick of pediatrica good night everyone Hi doctors, this is Miko of Pediatrica and remind lang ako of our anti-allergy allies, Alnix Plus, Alnix, and Allerzet. So how does Alnix Plus and Alnix become your perfect pair in managing allergic rhinitis in children? Step 1, use Alnix Plus for 5-7 to seven days, twice a day. 
And step 2, use Alnix for 7 to 30 days once a day. Don't forget your skin allergy ally, Levocetirizin Allerzet, all Z for potent skin allergy relief. Iron up with the new Ferlin Iron Duo. Ferlin is your therapeutic partner in iron deficiency and iron deficiency anemia management. Ferlin Vita is your new preventive partner in iron deficiency and iron deficiency anemia management. Ferlin Vita is a lower dose ferrous gluconate with a better tasting formulation to make sure that your RENI requirements for daily iron are met. Ferlin Vita is used to promote and maintain good blood health for a better brain and immune system development. So iron up with our new iron duo, Ferlin for the therapeutic management of ID and IDA and Ferlin Vita for preventive daily usage. Good day, doctor. My name is Aryan, and I'm here to share with you Pediatrica Skin Trio, Nubicin, Exocort, and Rash Free. Not only do these brands are affordable, the brands are also safe, effective, and most importantly, trusted by you, our dear doctors. Let me start with Nubicin, Pediatrica's brand of Nupirucin. Nupicin is the effective and economical topical choice for bacterial skin infections. And also, your patient can save for up to 73 pesos for the 5 gram shoe and 89 pesos for the 10 gram shoe. Again, please do consider Mupicin. Next, we have Exocort, the mildest skin steroid that is safe to use for babies' delicate skin. As you can see, Exocort is categorized as category number 7, making it the safest and mildest skin steroid available. So, doctor, Please do consider Exocort, your first-line solution to ease dermatitis. And last but not the least, we have Pediatrica's brand of zinc oxide, Rash Free. Rash Free is the protective and soothing relief for diaper rash. So please, doctor, consider our Rash Free. Prevent diaper rash. Rash Free. Right. Good evening, dear doctors. So again, it's time for that our special segment for tonight. Siempre, ating pediatrica game time. I would like to call on my co-hosts, Mika and Enzo. Are you there? Yeah, it's your Aryan. Here now. Good evening. Hello, I hello. We hear that tune. <laughs> Ang ganda naman ng design natin for tonight's pediatrics. Uh, diba? Ano ata ito? Para mga K-pop na ano, accessories. Oh, oh, Mga light, oh, oh. light stick ganun. Napaka uh, ano, colorful. Napaka-fresh. <laughs> <laughs> K-pop na yun. Para ano tayo update eh. Itong <laughs> update eh. Alright, ano bang pakulo natin this evening? Alright. Game mechanics, dog. Uh, same pa rin naman. If need natin i-type or i-key in sa chat box, uh, type nyo lang, Doc, for the lucky last uh, winners. Pero may segments din kami, like the interactive segments, yung mga virtual bring me's or mga shout-outs. So, don't, Doc, open nyo lang ang mic and shout your lungs out until ma-acknowledge kayo na ating mga DTI representatives. So, pinak- pinakauna and pinaka loudest na mag-shout out yun ang matatawag all right and so what is in store ayan enzo ano ba to ito ata yung baon mo pag nag area <laughs> probably siya meron na po tayo yung tinatawag na pediatric snack box yan ang bago natin yung kikokoy ngayon snacks po ang pamibigay natin this session and Ano, prepare na lang po for sweet treats and yummy, yummy chips. Mga gagawin po ang laman ng ating snack box. Sweet surprises. Tapos bigla ang laman ng sampalok din yan. <laughs> Bobot, sampalok. Masarap yun yung, yung ano, chips. Pro-tropic. Snacks naman yun. Marigold, tsaka Marigold. tropic. 
Masarap yun. Tsaka yung, ano, plastic balloon. <laughs> Ginawang snack. Ginamik-mik. Mik-mik. Alright, tuloy natin. So, we have 160 players. Sorry. Yan, simulan natin. Shout out! Ayan, Doc. Open your mics. So, what is Pediatrica's brand of Ferrous Gluconate? Ayan, bagong-bago. Bagong-bago ito. ito. Gluconate. Bagong labas. I think ito yung nasa virtual detailer ni Enzo. Yes, yeah, so sa video ko po siya kanina. Tagsisimula po siya sa letter F. At may second word na siya. Oo. Sino kaya? Mananaw na atin. Invita. Ayan. Invita. Ayun, ayun. Sino po Again, yun? Sige natin na natin kung sinong lilitaw. Perlin Vita! <laughs> Ayan. Nakikita ko po si Dr. Ligaya. Dr. Ligaya Hepte. Yes. We heard it right. Perlin Vita. Congratulations po, Doc. Oh, oh, baka Thank you sa po, sample pero nyo. Segment na to, ano, ng Perlin Vita. Doc. Sana Doc, na-try nyo for ano, taste test kasi we really position it na the better tasting uh, Ferrous. Ah, ayun. Ferrous. <laughs> Ferrous. Pareho naman Ferrous eh. Iron oh, salt. Oh, oh, oh. Mixed fruits flavor. So, ayan. Remind pa rin kami Doc, the Iron Duo, regular Ferlin as our therapeutic management and continue natin for preventive daily use at yung Ferlin Vita. For the next question, Nika, take it away. Okay, so our next winner will be the luck, uh, lucky last number 15. So, zoomed in. What is this item? Ayan. We finally got rid of this item. <laughs> in public places. Alin dyan yung item? Ito et, bang may yelo? Hindi, hindi ito. Ah, ito. Ito, ito, itong malabo. Ano uh, yan? Malabo. Nakala ko yung picture ng apat. Wow. Akala natin nakamove on na tayo pero sa hospitals meron pa rin. Ika, ikaw ang lalagay nung line? Or si Enzo? Oh, sige, ako, ako. Ah, Dahil yeah. mabagal ang internet ko ngayon, Feeling ko naman pag naglapag na ako ng line ay marami na rin makakapagsagot. <laughs> Yung nagsatype ako gano'n na late na pala. Nasa ano, nasa kila pa. So tuloy-tuloy lang doctors ang pag-type no? Kasi hindi natin mapipredict kung kailan maglalapag si Sir Enzo ng line. One, two, three. Huwag ka magbilang. <laughs> ay mabagal din naman yung sync ng internet ko. So okay lang. Bukas pa raw ang line. 15. Bukas pa, oo. Oh, oh. Ayan, naglagay na po ako ng line. Ako, hindi na po natin makakredit yung mga sagot after ng line. And we will be asking help from our ano, DTI representatives para makita kung sino po ang winner natin ngayon. Medyo obvious ba tong item Hindi ko nga napansin eh. Doon ako sa ano, picture. Apat na yan. Tayo yan eh. Plus one. Sino yung plus one? Iconic kasi yung kanyang ano, yung color blue na lock. <laughs> ah, yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 <laughs> Di pa daw nakikita ang linya. <laughs> Naku, nasa taas na yung linya. Nag- hindi pa ano, lumalabas. Nakidapawan ba daw? Na, nalapag na. Bumabiyahe pa po. Nastuck po sa biyahe. Oh, sige, gusto ko to. Ay, naglapag na ako. Grabe ka. Ayan, meron na, meron na. Ay, We see it. Ayan. Nahiya ako sa ano, internet. Okay, so our lucky last number 15 is Dr. Neil Herrera. So congratulations po. Let's reveal. You are right. It's actually the face shield. Congrats, Doc. Ano pala to, yung king day. King day ba yun? <laughs> Alright, Nika, this is brought to us ka. First, this question is brought to us by Pediatrica Skin Trio for the child's healthy skin. Don't forget our MER. Napakadaling tandaan, no? We have our mupicin for your prevention and treatment of bacterial skin infections. Of course, don't forget hydro hydrocortisone exocort, our first-line solution to ease dermatitis, and our zinc oxide rash-free for the prevention and soothing relief of diaper rash. 
Thank you. Tuloy natin. Number Dr. Neil. Yan. Yan, ikaw dito, Enzo. Oh, virtual bring me po ito. So, kailangan mag-open ng camera at i-open ang mic. Kailangan nyo pong banggitin ang pangalan nyo kasama ng item na ipapabring me namin. So, open your mic and your cameras and say your name po, dear doctors, para ma-acknowledge po namin kayo as the winner this time. Yeah. Ready na po ba? Ready na po ba tayo? Lapit nyo na po sa ano, mga kagamitan nyo. Hiling ko yung mga sa doctors inyo. natin dumiretso sa ano, dining table. <laughs> sa dining table. <laughs> Kasi dati puro toy. Ano pa yung last time? Ketchup ba? Mga ano eh. Toyo, gano'n. Ketchup. Tubig. Dapat sa mga residents natin meron na rin mga toyo din sa quarters. Correct, Ma'am Tin. Last time. Nalalag si Dr. What is... So what is our ano, bring me this time? For tonight, bring me a ring light. Ring light. Ayan, siguro Mga naman tagal po ito, ng ring light. Marami ng ano, ring light mga doctors na The ring light is here. Ganyan dapat. Uh, the ring light is here. The ring light is here. Doc Jazz, De La Cruz. Ayan, the ring light Paano is... Paano ka magbaliktad? Ayan. 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 Wait ilang, lang, doktor. Ipipin ka namin. Ipipin ka namin. Ayan, ayan, ayan. Naka-ano ako sound nito? Filter? Think Evidence-based. Ilang, ilang po yan. Saan nyo yan na-order, Doc, sa Amazon? Sa Shopee! Yay! <laughs> yeah. Salamat, Shopee! Congrats, Doktora! Congrats po, Doc! <laughs> Nagkataon. Thank you! Welcome, Doc! Hi! Hi! Yeah, and this segment is brought to you, or that question was brought to you by Azithromycin Monohydrate Zenith. This is your reliable short course RTI therapy dahil tatlong araw lang po ang treatment natin. Of course, it comes with the Accu syringe for accurate dosage and administration. Thank you po. Right, tuloy natin, Doc. Number four, ito, bagong segment, guess the emoji. And may paklu may paklu tayo dito doc. It's a Filipino place. Lucky last ten. Okay ato. Koi lugar sa Pilipinas. Yeah, Kung saan right. daw daw daw. Maraming mga enchanted yeah. creatures mga. Ay nagets ko. Bakit ko? Viti viti yan. Si Enzo na pa isip. <laughs> Bakit coffee? <laughs> Blue gray? <laughs> ayan, ayan, ayan. Lucky last 10. Don't forget, sir. So, yung mahiwagang linya. Enzo. Nahihiya ako sa linya ko. Tatlong oras bago lumabag. With our DPI. Okay. Meron na bang nakakakuha? Uh, one, two, na bang... three. Keep typing in your... Ah, answers kasi unpredictable po ang ating line. Ayan po, nalapag ko na po. Nako, sana na. Sana lumabas na siya. <laughs> Kina pa ako represent. <laughs> Ayan, reveal natin. I think we have a winner. So, Siyempre, with the Sorry. emoji. Diba? It's ano to? It's an ant. Ito, Zoe is T. T. Susi or T. So, spell it out, Antique. Antique. <laughs> Sabi ko, bakit blue coffee key? Blue coffee? So, congratulations, Dr. Zen Villegas. Ay, congratulations, congratulations Dr. Doc. May snack box ka po sa amin. So that segment is brought to us by our Cephic Sign, the innovator Cephic Sign in the Philippines. Sweet strawberry flavor. Number five, Mika, ikaw magpa-shout out. Okay, paunahan. Shout out at least two anti-allergy brands of Pediatrica. Paunahan. Dalawa lang do. Ilan bang anti-allergy natin? Bang five? Do we have Ayan. Shout out daw po. So, pa- turn on ng mic. Ikaw nyo lang, Doc. Dalawang brand. Dalawang A po yan. 
Dr. Thank you so much, Dr. Yes. Thank you. Thank you po. Alnix, so Alrikin, correct, Dr. Yes, either of these five brands. Okay. Alnix, Alnix Plus, Allerzet, Lorapet, and Allerkid. Yung ating mga anti-allergy medications. Ayan, Mika, explain mo nga itong ating EEA. Okay, so we have our anti-allergy uh, allies na tatlong A's. Alnix Plus, Alnix, and Allerzet. Of course, paano ba natin ginagamit ang combination ng Alnix Plus and Alnix? For the first 5 to 7 days BID, we have our Alnix Plus and for our, our Alnix naman po is 7 to 30 days, once a day lang. And don't forget for skin allergies and for prolonged treatment, management of uh, allergic rhinitis in children, we have Levocetirzin Allerzet. Grapes flavor po ang lahat. Thank you. Thank you, Rika. Our anti-allergy allergies. Si Enzo ulit for bring me. Ayan, Enzo. <laughs> Nag-enjoy ka na yun sa akin. Gusto ko yung ito. Bring me po tayo. So once again, please turn on your cameras and your microphones. Ano naman kaya itong... Unmute your microphone. Kaya itong pakulo mo. Tingnan natin. So, Doktora, bigyan niyo daw si Enzo ng isa. Pakotobok to. Naku! Meron pa ba yan? Dabaw FM Pass. QR code. Ano po ba ang mga meron kayo dyan? My God, saan na ba yung FM? Pakatuwa, no? Makikita nyo talaga sa gallery. May mga nag, ano, gallery view. May mga nagkakalikot na. Oo. QR code nyo po. Vaccine. FM pass. Vaccine cert. Ganyan. Pwede QR code? Pwede po, QR code. Wow! Yeah! Ayan, pwede yan, Doc. Kasi baka wala na talagang FM Pass kasi ako nga wala na. Ayan, pwede ko yun. Ayan, evidence-based. Congratulations. Ayan, Hindi ko po makita. Ayan, Ayan. Ay, congratulations po, Doktora Go- Kotano. Ayan. Yay! Yay! Uh, diba, Dok? Pero, Dok, yung, Pero na po ko, yung, price yung FM Pass ninyo, buhay pa ba? Wala na. Ano pa Enzo, no? FM Pass Thursday Group. Ganon. <laughs> o nga, meron pa yung red, di ba? Tsaka black print. Diba? Red print, black print. May ganun pa dati. Alright, let's continue. Oh, anyway, congrats, Doktor. Yeah, this that segment was brought to you by Amok Club. Your ammunition against infection. Available po tayo in BID and TID dosage po. No? Ang, ang, ang TID po natin, napakamura lang po at 312 pesos. Pwede ko sabihin yun. Yes, opo. Uh, your ammunition against infection ko, Amoxiclub, Amoxiclub. Thank you. Tuloy natin ang saya. Number 7, ito daw, ang Jumble, one of our classic segments. Ito ano ba ito? Musoid. Diba? Provalet. Kala ko ibang lingwahe, Sir Arian. Ano ba yan? Ito niyo po, ah. Ano ba ito para siyang, ano, scientific name? Newsoid. Anong clue natin dito, Sir Arian? Clue, it's one of our newly acquired uh, med- uh, brands from our sister company, the Medicare. For the management of epilepsy. So it's an anti-convulsant. Pero ito, Doc, yung kanyang generic. Tama, no? This is used for as first line for the management of generalized seizures. Okay. And less irritating sa stomach ang ating molecule. Ito yung napapaisip ako ngayon sa ano. Oh, so, sa, se- sa, sa session natin tonight. Gusto ko yung sumasagot din si Enzo. Oh, iniisip ko din siya mentally. Eh. So, okay. Newsoid Provalet. <laughs> pwede, pwede na. Pa- parang ano eh, parang bakteriya yung tunog eh. Pang prescription. Ay, ako pala yung maglalapag, no? 
Tonto ako dito. Nakatingin ako pala yung maglalapag ng night. <laughs> Alright. One, two, three. Lucky last five. Here we go. Musoid Provaleta. Parang Harry Potter spell. Yeah, parang spell. Pili nga, Zo. Isang ano nga. Isang spell casting dyan. Uh, Siyempre, nandiyan pa rin ang X. <laughs> Very signature ni Harry. Yeah, we already have a winner. Yes. Sino bang panalo? Congratulations! Tora Bianca Isagire, you got it right. It's our sodium valproate. So our brand for this is of course our Valprostevia. And you know, doctor, that versus other brands, you brand B, you can save as much as 462 pesos per bottle or 8,088 per year. Because alam naman natin long-term treatment once you start with our Valprostevia. So parang you're paying for another year na din with, the, with your savings of 8,000. Valprostevia, be confidently in control. Alright, bring me ulit. And sino mama papa bring me? Si Mika naman. Okay, sige, for a virtual bring me, bring me any pediatric medication or vitamin. Pwede rin samples namin, pwede rin. Anong meron dyan? Sa samples pala. Eh, diretso na. Emma Fernando. Apo, just show your camera, Doc, and your sample. Yeah! Wala, i-on mo, Doc! Ay, so cool. Oh, hello, Carlene Vita! Ayan. Sample. I think, ano, na ulit na, Emma, Doc Emma Fernandez. Kasi na, delay lang yung, ano, camera. But, yes. Thank you, Verlin Vita. Congratulations, Doc Emma Fernandez. Sana Doc Congratulations din po kay uh, Ating Ferlin Vita Nakamute si Doktora Doktora na try nyo na po ba ang ating Ferlin Vita I-try pa well, I-try pa po oh, <laughs> Live na live talaga uh, Live taste testing Ay, Pwede yeah. naman Pwede <laughs> naman Live taste testing ayan, ayan. Oh, Live live Ita-try po Wala lang <laughs> ไม่ได้ครับอันนี้ครับอันนี้ครับอันนี้ครับอันนี้ครับอันนี้ครับอันนี้ครับอันนี้ครับอันนี้ครับอันนี้ครับอันนี้ครับอันนี้ครับอัน
pag selfie ko insufficient funds ganon <laughs> <laughs> All right. Congratulations, Doctora. So last question time for tonight. And again, this is brought to us by our AI brands and the Infective Portfolio. Amoklav, Pidiamox, Genius, and Tergesen. Ito so, yung napakadaling brands. mapatanda, no, Sir Arian, kasi tops ang ating mnemonic. No, no. Kung merong tapa, merong tops. Okay. Ang galing, ang beauty mo. Tops. Galing, galing. Bago yan. Bilis mag-isip ng mnemonic. Sa kanina, M-E-R. Ngayon, tops. Wow. Ang ganda ng headset ni Mika. Or kay Enzo ba yun? Kasi yung pala yung Enzo. Or may ano, RGB light. Gamer ka, friend. Streamer. ML yan, Dota. Alright, Air number 10. Ito na. An emoji game. Guess the brand. Okay, so this is for our lucky last number seven, no? Keep typing your answers. Guess the brand. Actually, ewan ko kung tama, mata ba yung dapat gamitin natin? Hindi natin alam paano ito pronounce. Kasi naman how it's spelled. It's a brand of a store. Store box. Oo, oh, kalaban ni Mandawe Pong to. Oo, oh, wala lang ganun dito sa Lan, si, ano, si Mandawe Pong kailangan, eh. Pero di ba sa Moa ba? Meron na nito. Sa Moa. Sa Moa yes. ba ito yung pinakamalaki nila worldwide in the world. na store? Yes. Uh, at papabudol ka. Uh, Oo, oh, tsaka may mga hearsay na maglalagay si Davao, di ba? Gusto ko yung ang sinagot ni Titan Wilcon. <laughs> well, medyo saucy yung si Titan Wilcon. Yun ba kaya sa Wilcon? Malayo lang. Wilcon. Wala po kaming tie up na hardware. Andy man. Masarap daw ang Swedish meatballs sa lugar na to. At dinadayo para nila, sa yes. Swedish meatballs. Ah, may, may food din pala to. Mayroon. Regular menu. Oo, kasi sa sobrang laki ng place magugutom ka, kakaikot mo doon, kakain ka muna ulit. Papabili ka talaga ng dining set. Sabi, gagamitin ko. <laughs> <laughs> yung pagkain mo, yung maganda lang ito na kutsara. Pidil, <laughs> pidil sa. Alright, do we have a winner? Uh, sorry, hindi ko po nakikita. Mika, please help. Reveal ko na muna ang ating guest the brand. Of course, this is IKEA. Yes. Sana soon. Okay. So we have our last winner for this evening. No? Congratulations po. From all the way from Digos, Dr. Vera Lu de los Reyes. Congratulations, Doc. Thank you so much for joining tonight, Digos. Ayan, thank you, thank you. And so that ends our segment for tonight for our Pediatrica Game Time. Again, my name is Aryan. And I am Mika. And I am Enzo. Thank you for Thank you, everyone. See you next you. week. Very good evening to, no? Mabilis ang internet sa Digos. And so, kamusta ka naman dyan? <laughs> Lahat ng internet speed na punta sa Digos. <laughs> sa kidapawan, wala. <laughs>
Ferlin Vita is used to promote and maintain good blood health for a better brain and immune system development. So iron up with our new iron duo, Ferlin for the therapeutic management of ID and IDA and Ferlin Vita for preventive daily usage. Good day, doctor. My name is Aryan, and I'm here to share with you Pediatrica Skin Trio, Nupicin, Exocort, and Rash Free. Not only do these brands are affordable, the brands are also safe, effective, and most importantly, trusted by you, our dear doctors. Let me start with Nupicin, Pediatrica's brand of Nupirucin. Nupicin is the effective and economical topical choice for bacterial skin infections. And also, your patient can save for up to 73 pesos for the 5 gram shoe and 89 pesos for the 10 gram shoe. Again, please do consider Nupicin. Next, we have Exocort, the mildest skin steroid that is safe to use for babies' delicate skin. As you can see, Exocort is categorized as category number 7, making it the safest and mildest skin steroid available. So, doctor, Please do consider Exocort, your first-line solution to ease dermatitis. And last but not the least, we have Pediatrica's brand of zinc oxide, Rash Free. Rash Free is the protective and soothing relief for diaper rash. So please, doctor, consider our Rash Free. Prevent diaper rash. Rash Free. Hi doctors, this is Miko of Pediatrica and remind nang ako of our anti-allergy allies, Alnix Plus, Alnix, and Allerzet. So how does Alnix Plus and Alnix become your perfect pair in managing allergic rhinitis in children? Step 1, use Alnix Plus for 5 to 7 days, twice a day. And step 2, use Alnix for 7 to 30 days, once a day. Don't forget your skin allergy ally, Levocetirizine Allerzet, all Z for potent skin allergy relief. Iron up with the new Ferlin Iron Duo. Ferlin is your therapeutic partner in iron deficiency and iron deficiency anemia management. Ferlin Vita is your new preventive partner in iron deficiency and iron deficiency anemia management. Ferlin Vita is a lower dose ferrous gluconate with a better tasting formulation to make sure that your RENI requirements for daily iron are met. Ferlin Vita is used to promote and maintain good blood health for a better brain and immune system development. So iron up with our new iron duo, Ferlin for the therapeutic management of ID and IDA, and for Lin Vita for preventive daily usage. Good day, doctor. My name is Aryan, and I'm here to share with you Pediatrica Skin Trio, Nupicin, Exocort, and Rash Free. Not only do these brands are affordable, the brands are also safe, effective, and most importantly, trusted by you, our dear doctors. Let me start with Mupicin, Pediatrica's brand of Mupirucin. Mupicin is the effective and economical topical choice for bacterial skin infections. And also, your patient can save for up to 73 pesos for the 5 gram shoe and 89 pesos for the 10 gram shoe. Again, please do consider Mupicin. Next, we have Exocort, the mildest skin steroid that is safe to use for babies' delicate skin. As you can see, Exocort is categorized as category number 7, making it the safest and mildest skin steroid available. So doctor, please do consider Exocort, your first-line solution to ease dermatitis. And last but not the least, we have Pediatrica's brand of zinc oxide, Rash Free. Rash Free is the protective and soothing relief for diaper rash. So please, doctor, consider our rash free. Prevent diaper rash. Rash free. 
Hi doctors, this is Miko.